100 years ago, in the 1920s, the fastest swimming record for the 100 meter freestyle was 1 minute and 0 0.4 seconds, set by Duke Kahanamoku. Many people thought that was the limit, believing this record would never be broken and that it was beyond human capabilities. Slowly but surely, swimmers kept breaking records. In 1968, Zach Zorn became the first person to break the 52 second barrier in the 100 meter freestyle, clocking in at 51.9 seconds. Once again, people thought that's it, it's the limit. But now in 2023, we have Caleb Dressel, who currently holds the record of 46.96 seconds and is known as the fastest swimmer on the planet. Even now, you can find some people saying that no one can break the current record. Is this really true? Let's dissect the whole engineering behind swimming. If you've watched our previous video about natural theoretical limits, you know that we humans are not the fastest animals in water, and this is immediately obvious from our anatomy. For example, we lack fins, gills, and streamlined bodies like fish. Our body shape creates significant drag in the water. Unlike fish with their smooth, tapered bodies, humans have irregular shapes with protruding limbs. This means we have to expend a lot of energy just to overcome water resistance. In the water, we're more like a potato with limbs trying to push through jello. When you're swimming, you're essentially in a tug of war between two forces propulsion, the force pushing you forward, and drag, the force holding you back. The faster you try to go, the harder they hold on. In scientific terms, drag increases with the square of your velocity. The drag force on a swimmer can be expressed in this formula, where FD is the drag force, Ryo is the density of water, V is the velocity of the swimmer, CD is the drag coefficient, which depends on the swimmer's shape and technique, a is the frontal area of the swimmer. In normal people terms, that means if you double your speed, you quadruple the drag. It's like trying to run through an increasingly thick wall of invisible jello. When a swimmer moves through water, they encounter two main types of resistance, form drag and friction drag. Form drag is caused by the difference in pressure between the front and back of the swimmer. As the swimmer moves, they push water out of the way, creating an area of high pressure in front and low pressure behind. Friction drag, on the other hand, is caused by the water sticking to the swimmer's skin. This creates a thin layer of water that moves with the swimmer, known as the boundary layer. To swim faster, a swimmer needs to generate enough propulsive force to overcome these drag forces. The main sources of propulsion in swimming are the arms and legs. In freestyle swimming, about 90% of the propulsive force comes from the arms, with the remaining 10% from the kick. Drag is so important in every sports race. For example, cyclists shave their legs to be more aerodynamic and decrease the drag. Believe it or not, tiny hairs on legs make a difference. Trials and tests have found shaving cyclists' legs reduced drag by 7%, which gave them a 79 second advantage over a 40 kilometer time trials. Water is about 800 times denser than air. So swimming fast is kind of like trying to sprint through a pool of honey. Next time you're eating breakfast, try moving your spoon quickly through your honey. That resistance you feel is similar to what swimmers experience, just multiplied by a few hundred times. Another limitation is our respiratory system. While fish can extract oxygen directly from water through their gills, we need to lift our heads out of the water to breathe. This action disrupts our streamlined position and creates additional drag, slowing us down. Even the most efficient swimmers lose speed every time they turn their heads to breathe. Despite these limitations, humans have developed remarkable swimming techniques that allow us to move through water at impressive speeds. The four main competitive swimming strokes, freestyle, butterfly, backstroke, and breaststroke, each represent different approaches to overcoming our anatomical constraints. The freestyle, also known as the front crawl, 
is the fastest of these strokes. It involves alternating arm movements combined with a flutter kick, allowing swimmers to maintain a relatively streamlined position in the water. The world's top swimmers can reach speeds of up to 2.29 meters per second over short distances using this stroke. But how does this compare to other animals in the water? Well, let's just say we're not winning any underwater races anytime soon. The sailfish, often considered the fastest fish in the ocean, can reach speeds of up to 110 kilometers per hour. Even the much larger blue whale can cruise at 50 kilometers per hour when it needs to. Compared to these aquatic speedsters, our top swimming speed looks more like a leisurely paddle. However, it's important to note that human swimming speed isn't just about raw power or streamlined bodies. It's a complex interplay of technique, physiology, and even technology. Over the years, advancements in all these areas have allowed humans to swim faster than ever before. Now, let's talk about our engine, our muscles and energy systems. The human body is pretty amazing, but when it comes to swimming, we're like a sports car engine stuffed into a sailboat. Powerful, but not exactly efficient in the water. Our muscles can generate impressive force, but a lot of that force goes to waste in the water. It's like trying to push a shopping cart by pedaling a bicycle. Sure, you're working hard, but most of that effort isn't translating into forward motion. We have three main energy systems. The first, the ATP PC system. This is like a small, high-octane fuel tank in a race car. It gives us explosive power for very short bursts, like when we dive off the starting block. The second is the anaerobic system. Think of this as a powerful but quickly depleting battery. It's great for short, intense efforts like a 50 meter sprint. And the third is the aerobic system. This is our long distance diesel engine. It can keep us going for a long time, but it's not winning any speed records. In sprint events like the 50 meter freestyle, swimmers rely heavily on the ATP PC and anaerobic systems. For longer events, like the 1500 meter freestyle, the aerobic system becomes crucial. The trick is balancing these systems, kind of like trying to win a race while managing your fuel economy. Swimming technique plays a crucial role in maximizing speed. Elite swimmers spend years perfecting their stroke to minimize drag and maximize propulsion. Here are some key elements of an efficient freestyle technique. The first is the body position. Keeping the body as horizontal as possible reduces form drag. Think of how a high-speed train or jet is designed to cut through air. Swimmers aim for a similar streamlined shape in the water. The second is the arm stroke. A high elbow catch and strong pull phase generate maximum propulsion. The third is the kick. A narrow fast kick helps maintain body position and add some propulsion. The fourth is breathing. Minimal head movement during breathing reduces disruption to streamlining. And finally, the underwater phase, a powerful push-off and streamlined glide after turns can significantly reduce overall time. But even with perfect technique, there are still physiological limits to how fast a human can swim. The human body, while adaptable, has certain limitations when it comes to swimming speed. Here are some key factors. Muscle power. The amount of force our muscles can generate in water is limited. Aerobic capacity, our ability to deliver oxygen to muscles during prolonged exertion, has an upper limit. Anaerobic threshold, there's a limit to how long we can sustain high intensity effort before lactic acid buildup becomes too great. Recovery rate, how quickly our body can clear lactic acid and replenish energy stores affects our ability to maintain high speeds. These physiological factors set an upper bound on human swimming speed, but where exactly is this bound? Let's look at some theoretical calculations. Using fluid dynamics equations and making some assumptions about human physiology, researchers have estimated that the theoretical maximum speed for human swimmers is around 3 meters per second over very short distances. 
So theoretically, we could swim 100 meter freestyle in 33 seconds, which is 13 seconds faster than the current world record. This is significant because the difference between 1920s and now is 14 seconds, and from now to theoretical limit is almost the same. But what do you think, since it's going to take an exponential effort to reach the theoretical limit, when are we going to reach 33 seconds? 100 years? 200 years? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. However, it's important to note that this theoretical maximum assumes perfect conditions and technique, which are practically impossible to achieve in reality. So, if we're so far from our theoretical limit, why haven't we seen more dramatic improvements in swimming speed in recent years? In recent years, improvements in swimming speed have slowed down considerably. This plateau effect is due to a combination of factors. The first is diminishing returns. As we get closer to the theoretical limit, each improvement requires exponentially more effort. The second is the rule changes. Some technological advancements like full body swimsuits have been banned to maintain fairness. The third is the physiological limits. We may be approaching the limits of human physiology in terms of muscle power and cardiovascular capacity, but this doesn't mean we've hit an absolute wall. There are still avenues for potential improvement. While we may be approaching the limits of what the human body can do naturally, there are several areas where advancements could lead to faster swimming speeds. As our understanding of genetics improves, we may be able to identify and nurture individuals with genetic predispositions for swimming excellence. For example, researchers have identified genes like ACTN3, which is associated with fast twitch muscle fibers crucial for sprinting. Future genetic screening could help identify potential swimming prodigies at an early age. Who knows, maybe after 50 to 100 years, gene editing might even give us human-fish hybrids. Advances in sports science could lead to more effective training regimens, allowing swimmers to get closer to their physiological limits. For instance, the use of AI-powered stroke analysis tools like those developed by SwimAR can provide real-time feedback on technique, helping swimmers optimize their performance down to the millisecond. Improvements in nutrition and recovery techniques could allow swimmers to train harder and recover faster. Personalized nutrition plans based on genetic profiles are already being used by some elite athletes. Additionally, advanced recovery methods like cryotherapy and compression therapy are becoming more common in swimming, potentially allowing for more intense training sessions. Further study of fluid dynamics and human biomechanics could lead to even more efficient swimming techniques. For example, researchers at Bielefeld University have used robotic fish models to study efficient swimming motions, which could potentially be applied to human swimming techniques. While full body suits are banned, there may be other technological advancements in swimwear or pool design that could reduce drag. For instance, Speedo is developing swimsuits with built-in sensors to track performance metrics, while some researchers are exploring swimwear materials inspired by shark skin to reduce drag further. It's worth noting that any significant improvements in swimming speed are likely to be incremental rather than dramatic. We're unlikely to see someone suddenly swimming at four meters per second. One aspect we haven't discussed yet is the human factor, the psychological and emotional elements that can push athletes to exceed their perceived limits. Throughout history, we've seen examples of athletes breaking through seemingly insurmountable barriers. Roger Bannister breaking the four minute mile, Eliud Kipchoge running a marathon in under two hours. These achievements were once thought impossible. In swimming, we've seen similar breakthroughs. When Mark Spitz won seven gold medals in the 1972 Olympics, many thought this feat couldn't be surpassed. Yet in 2008, Michael Phelps won eight. Phelps himself broke world records that some thought would stand for decades. This human drive to push boundaries to go faster to be better is a wild card in predicting future swimming speeds. While we can calculate theoretical limits based on physics and physiology, the power of human determination and innovation 
is harder to quantify. As we push the boundaries of human swimming capability, who knows? Maybe one day we'll see a swimmer so fast they seem to have eaten the swim swim fruit, granting them supernatural speed in water. As we continue to refine our understanding of biomechanics, training methods, and human physiology, who knows what future swimming speeds we might achieve. One thing is certain, humans will keep pushing the limits, both in and out of the pool. What do you think? Will we see the 45 second barrier broken in the 100 meter freestyle in our lifetime? How do you think technology might change competitive swimming in the future? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Well, thanks for watching. This episode was brought to you with the help of these Patreon supporters. If you want to support this channel, head over to Patreon. Thanks to everyone who is supporting. So more interesting videos are coming up. Please subscribe and hit the like button.